Ajit Pai will lose. Uh, Evan Greer writing today from uh, fightforthefuture.org. Uh, today, the FCC is expected to vote to gut net neutrality. But uh, battle for the net, team internet, and uh, demand progress, fight for the future, the Free Press Action Fund. Uh, they're announcing a massive internet-wide campaign to demand that our elected officials in Congress use a what's called a resolution of disapproval under the Congressional Review Act. Now, the Congressional Review Act was put into place by Congress, uh, by Republicans in Congress specifically, to make it possible for Congress to overturn excessive regulations, <laughs> as it were, from executive branch agencies. So if the EPA, uh, you know, the, if the, the EPA has given broad, uh, a broad mandate, for example, you can, you can deal with pollution. So the EPA decides, well, we're going to decide that carbon dioxide is part of pollution. Hadn't been part of the law, but the EPA gets to make the rules because that's what the law says. The EPA makes the rules. So the EPA makes that rule. At that point, Congress could, under the Congressional Oversight uh, Law, Congress could come in, the Congressional Review Act, the CRA, Congress could come in and say, no, nah, we didn't really mean carbon dioxide. We were just talking about soot. And they can actually change the rules that have been put into place by regulatory agencies. So one of those regulatory agencies is the FCC. And the FCC is fixing, presumably today, to vote to gut net neutrality protections. And if not today, someday soon. Ajit Pai, former Verizon lawyer, is the head of the FCC. There's three men who are Republicans on the FCC and two women who are Democrats. The two women who are Democrats are saying, we need a free and open internet. The three men who are Republicans are saying, we need to turn the internet over to a half a dozen giant corporations so that they can make huge profits that they will recycle back to the Republican Party. I got an email from, uh, via the Sanders Institute uh, from Robert Reich. And Robert Reich says, you know, if and when this happens, it's going to, number one, drive up prices for internet service. He says, broadband providers can charge customers higher rates to access certain sites or raise rates for internet co companies to reach consumers at faster speeds. Either way, those price hikes get passed along to you. Number two, it'll give corporate executives, this would be in the internet service business, free reign to slow down and censor news or websites that don't match their political agenda, or give preference to their own content for any reason at, or for any reason at all. And number three, it'll stifle innovation. Cable companies could severely hurt their competitors by blocking specific apps or online services, and small businesses who can't afford to pay higher rates could be squeezed out altogether. But if Congress passes a resolution of disapproval under the Congressional Review Act, they can force the FCC, or, or basically override the FCC's decision on net neutrality. This would be a first step. Then the second step would be to actually pass a law saying that the internet in the United States is considered a public utility and is regulated under Title II of the, communications, the Telecommunications Act, which is what Tom Wheeler put into place back in 2015 and is basically how the internet had been operating right up until 2015. But now you've got these big multi-billion dollar corporations that are coming in and saying, no, we want our piece of this. It's pretty incredible. McWayne in uh, Chino Valley, Arizona. Hey, McWayne, what's on your mind today? Hey, Tom. You know, it occurs to me the, these fires in uh, California are an evident demonstration of the corruption of the Republican cult. Um, while men and women are risking their lives to save multi million dollar estates, in particular in Bel Air, at the same time, the, the Republican tax scam is through various scurious means of pocket picking are, are taking money from these firefighters and giving it to the owners of, of these multi-million dollar estates. It's true. As well denying climate catastrophe, which is the catalyst yep. for these fires. It's, it's, it's barbaric. Yeah, I, I think that that's a very, very good description. And, and you're absolutely right, uh, the, this, this tax bill. I don't know if you've seen the uh, Tom the Dancing Bug cartoon today. But uh, it's, uh, you, you can find it all over the net. I saw it over at Daily Kos. And, uh, you know, the, the little bill, you know, I'm just a bill, right? The, the, the wrapped up piece of paper, animated piece of paper. He says, okay, let's go off and, and, and be a bill. We'll be the, we'll be the uh, tax bill. 
and these two uh, lobbyists throw him in the back seat of a limousine and say, rip out the future tax cuts for the middle class, and they rip a piece off of him, and he goes, ah! And then they say, tear out education deductions, and yeah, stuff in tax breaks for wineries, golf courses, private jets, rip out health care, write in a clause defining a fetus as a person, make Cory Gardner happy. And then, you know, the, the bill is like just <laughs> trashed at that point. So, but that's, that's, that's what's going on. Yeah, they, uh, they, their governance seems to be equal parts barbarity and, and predatory. They, at the behest of their masters, are, are literally preying upon those they see as unworthy and, yep. and disposable. It's all about doing the bidding of the morbidly rich. That's what's going on. And, and, and that the morbidly rich are, are driving some really, really, truly dangerous policies in this country. McWayne, thanks for the call.